Hello everyone, this is Kartik and in this video we'll try out a problem from weekly contest 282 that is the third problem from this contest minimum time to complete trips and this is the point I would recommend you guys to pause the video, read the problem once try to do it maybe take 10-15 minutes if you've already tried then that's even better and now I'll start with the problem statement so the problem says that you are given with an array time this denotes what is the time taken by the IETH bus to complete a trip. A trip could be maybe that bus goes from a college to a nearby metro station and comes back. That, that could be an example. So it's given that it takes let's say x minutes or time at i minutes for the IETH bus to go and come back to its initial point. What we would like to do is we would like to find out what is the minimum time such that at least total trips have happened. So let's say if you have 10 buses in your college or your university, they go to a metro station, they come back. We'd like to find out what is the minimum time required to complete say 100 trips. That's an example. So let's try out the first example here. We have 1, 2 and 3 and total trips we want is 5. Okay. Yeah, this should be good. So we have three buses. One takes one minute, other take two, then third one takes three minutes. We want five total trips to be completed. So let's see. If I talk about trips completed at zero time, that could be f of zero equals to zero because no trip started, no completed. If I talk about f of one, then one trip is completed because bus one went and came back. Round trip took one second, one minute. How about f of 2? It would be that first bus has completed two trips by now and the second bus completes one trip. So it's 3. If you talk about f of 3, now if you think about it, bus 1 completes one more trip, bus 2 will not complete any more trip, but bus 3 completes another trip, so it becomes 5. So 3 minutes is the right answer here and I don't really need to go further for f4, f5, f6 because I have found out that in 3 minutes I will be able to complete at least 5 trips and that is the answer right so I hope you get the problem statement and the obvious solution here seems to be that if you are looking for this value let's just keep computing this f value all the way down till my f of x till my f of x becomes greater than or equal to the total trips that is given in the problem statement. That's exactly what I did here. Now let's think about the time complexity that would actually incur if we do this one by one. So before that let me look at the constraints again. Constraints say that the time length is okay and it could take up to 10 past 7 minutes for a bus to go and come back. That's a long time. Maybe it's seconds or whatever it is. And there could be around 10 power 5 buses. So you could do this in a brute force manner. You could find out what is F0. Does it is it greater than or equal to total trips? Maybe not. F1 is it greater than or equal to? Maybe not. Keep doing that. And every time you look at F of i, what would you do? You would see summation or sum of number of trips completed by the first bus trips by bus 1 plus number of trips completed by bus 2 and so on till the nth bus isn't it this is going to be your f of i and how will you find out trips of b1 given you had i minutes you will simply divide i by whatever time b bus 1 takes to complete one trip that would give you the number of trips completed by the bus 1 in i minutes similarly for each of these bus so this particular value it would take you o n time because for each bus you will need to find that trips b i value and f i can be evaluated in o n time you will do this for each value till you reach a point where fx is greater than or equal to total trips and this uh, becomes somewhat equal to what? on multiplied by x the number of times you had to do this right so that may not be so bad 
in fact might just work the thing is that if you observe here the function f if you observe it more clearly you'll see that it will always be monotonically increasing function either f of i plus 1 either f of i plus 1 is going to be equal to f of i or it is going to be greater than f of i it will never be less than it so it's a monotonically increasing function like this given this observation you could simply binary search for the first time so that f uh, binary search for the first x so that this condition holds so i hope the algorithm is clear to you let's pro program it out so i'm assuming that i will need at least minimum trips could be uh, minimum time i would say the minimum time required let's take it to be zero what should it take the maximum time as a bit challenging right how do i decide the maximum time let's just assume i had a single bus that's a valid assumption uh, majorly i'm just trying to get a very vague bound that is guaranteed to work so let me just say there was a single bus how much time will it take to complete total trips it will take this much time so if one trip is completed in time of zero then these many trips will be completed in total trips by time zero right so if total trips is five and time taken is one so it would be five by one that is i would take five minutes to complete five trips using one bus so for worst case scenario even if i just had that single bus my maximum time cannot be larger than this that, that i'm sure of it's actually going to be much smaller but i think i'm fine with this bound let's see what is the largest value of maximum time here the largest possible value here could be total trips given that time zero is one so my overall complexity will be somewhat if i go for the brute force approach it's going to be big of total trips multiplied by n and if i go for a binary search kind of approach it's going to be big o of n into log of the total trips and that is good enough so this is the complexity we are going for and let's implement it now okay. hmm so till when should i continue my search okay while this minimum and maximum search range does not converge to a single point we should continue doing it okay well then time is the maximum time. let's see what is the the midpoint mid time could be maximum time plus minimum time Hmm. Now I would see whether at mid time I complete more than equal to total trips or not. Or let's just find out how many trips I completed here. Trips can be completed. Or maybe trips completed at mid time equal to get completed trips. I'll implement this method later on. I'll just pass in the time that I have and the time taken by each bus. Hmm. Now, if this is greater than, if the trips I was able to complete is greater than or equal to the total trips, that's that's a good thing, right? So mid time can definitely help me out, and I don't want any time greater than this. So if I was able to complete in five minutes, equal greater than equal to the total trips, I will not check for six minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes because five minutes itself is sufficient. Its answer is going to be either five or something less than five. <clears throat> so if trips completed is greater than or equal to the total trips, then maximum time can be updated to the mid time. But what if it's less than it? In that case, five can definitely not be the answer. Let's say I check at five, and uh, in five minutes I was able to complete less than the total trips. Then five can definitely not be the answer. It's going to be something greater than five. Maybe six, maybe seven. 
So at that point, I should update my minimum time to be mid time plus one because mid time can definitely not be the answer. So I exclude it from my search range. So once that is done, I could simply return either minimum time or maximum time. Any, any I, both of these would be at the same value. Let me think about that. Would that be the case? Minimum time. Uh, uh, yes, that that looks right to me. And that's all. I just need to implement this method now. I expect this to work, but let's see. I'm getting three for this one, which is the right answer. For the second one, the answer is two. I'm not getting that, which is somewhat sad, but let's see why. <clears throat> in the second trip, in the second example, I want to complete one trip. Mm, time taken by one bus to complete it as two. I think I made some mistake here. So if a bus takes t minutes to complete one trip, then how many can it complete in five minutes? Um, in how many can it complete x trips? So one trip can be completed in t minutes, then one trip can be completed in t minutes. How about x? If I want to find x trips, it will take t into x time, isn't it? Yep. So if the first bus can complete one trip in this time, how much time will it take to complete these many trips? It will take this into time zero rather than divide. That's a bad uh, calculations from my end. Sorry about that. The initial formula was wrong. Yeah, this looks good. Let's submit. The only error could be that these two can multiply and become something larger than long long. And for that, let me just set these two long long. And either way, I had to return a long long rather than <coughs> what do you say? An int. It's still a runtime error, which is sad. It cannot be converted in type int. Hmm. Where am I even using it? Line 13. Oh. That's funny. Let's see why is that wrong. So time available divided by bus time. Yeah, it's the same formula mistake I made. It should be that uh, given this much time, how many trips I can complete? No, that, that's right. That's good. So sorry about the formula here and not using long long. I guess this is solved. So use the comment section if you'd like to interact with me and have any follow-up queries for me or anything like that. Comment section is the best place to go if you like the explanation or if you had any feedback or if you want to discuss anything in this solution or some other solution, go to the comment section. If you like what I do, 
please give a like and subscribe to the channel if you want the next problem also let me know bye